go to Connecticut where Representative Hayes is standing by for her five minutes. Representative Hayes, you are recognized. Thank you. Um, I am sitting here feverishly taking notes because I would like to recenter some of the comments that have been made in this committee. As an educator, I know for certain that predictable and sustained investments in our public schools do in fact lead to better student outcomes. And what we are talking about here today is decades of disinvestment. I agree that it is not fair that only wealthy parents should be able to decide where they send their schools. And I think the answer to that is to make all of our public schools the best that they can be. I also want to say, just as a follow up to Representative Bowman's um, questions, is that we are mandated. We have two very important mandates by um, the Individuals with Disabilities in Education Act. Public schools have to take differently abled students, and we are mandated to address the needs of those students first. Two very important things stand out. We have to provide a free and appropriate education to kids with disabilities, and we have to do that side by side with their peers in the least restrictive environments. I will also say that this conversation about supporting students, supporting teachers, supporting teachers is supporting students. I hear over and over, I've heard that, um, the, the COVID pandemic exposed what teachers were doing in the classroom as if teachers were hiding something. That um, teachers unions, um, the work that they've done. I remind you that teachers unions are teachers. And I can tell you that it was incredibly disturbing to hear one of the witnesses on the panel say that it took for you to go to a private school for a teacher to smile at you. Educated in public schools, taught in public schools, my children go to public schools, and I can tell you that those environments are warm and nurturing and could use additional federal funds. But this idea that the panacea for academic success is charter schools is completely deceiving. I will also note that there is a distinct difference between private charter schools and public charter schools, and I would encourage anyone who is listening to this committee to look those things up because a lot of the statistics that we're hearing today are from, in fact, public charter schools. I am a proponent of public charter schools. I think that parents should be able to choose a school that has a specific stream or a STEM academy or arts education or whatever it is their children are looking for. But I also believe that public funds should require public accountability. And that is what we're not talking about today. 90% of our children go to public schools, and we should make sure that all of those schools, whether it's the school two towns away, the school across the street, or the school around the corner, is the best school that it can be with the highest quality public education. My question today is for Professor Black. The Department of Education collects extensive data on public schools, including achievement, enrollment, discipline, bullying, and harassment, and special education information. This data collection helps make an informed decision on children's education. Unfortunately, in most states, private schools and private charter schools are not required to report the same information, even if they accept vouchers or public funding. Professor Is there any transparency or oversight built into school choice programs to ensure that the school's parents choose for their children are high quality, and is there any recourse if they are not found to be high quality? Additionally, do you believe states should, be, should fund voucher programs that do not meet high quality education standards? I do not believe they should fund vouchers that do not meet high quality education standards. There's tremendous lack of transparency in what happens outside of the public school system and therefore studies are often thinner because we don't have the data to which you reference. For the record, I would say I do support the public, uh, the U.S. Department of Education because it is the institution that ensures the enforcement of anti-discrimination statutes um, in this country. And I also would note for the record that no voucher program ever put to the people in the history of the United States of America has ever succeeded on the ballot. The most recent one of which I'm aware was in, in uh, Arizona and it failed 65 to 35 uh, percent in the state of Arizona. Thank you. As an educator by profession, I also support the U.S. Department of Education and their mission to ensure that every child in every zip code has a high quality public education. And in my last seconds, I just would like to amplify some of the challenges with charter schools that are not public. They vary by state. Um, 
There's a messy admission process that excludes many students. There's high teacher turnover and low student diversity. These are all things that we can look at and address if we truly want to make an argument for the charter school movement, and I am open to doing that. But I, um, quite frankly, I do not believe that that is the direction that this hearing is going. And with that, I yield back. Thank you, Mr. Chair.